Guys, guys, it's finally happened. Apple has finally updated their MacBook Air. But, it's no longer the MacBook Air it used to be. Now, as you all know, the MacBook Air has been needing a huge overhaul, and now they've made a new version of it. But it's not what people were expecting. It's no longer the $1,000 MacBook Air. It's now $1,100, which is a lot of money, and when you spec it out, it gets even more. Now, the way you can spec this new MacBook Air out, it's only it only comes with one CPU variation and that's an 8th generation i5 it's one of their fandest processors it's only that so it has a base clock speed of 1.6 gigahertz and a turbo boost clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz and you can get it with 8 or 16 gigs of RAM with either a 128 gig SSD or a 256 gig SSD or if you want to go all out a 1.5 terabyte SSD and now it's got Apple's T2 chip which controls the fingerprint scanner for touch ID when you want to unlock your MacBook and it also does all the encryption for the SSDs and also deals with your documents and if you're doing payments through touch ID that's all pretty nice and all but let's talk about the CPU for a minute so this CPU is a fanless CPU but then in fact the laptop does have a fan in it they put the fan in there so it can run at turbo clock speed for longer durations that's very nice but then with this MacBook some people might get a little bit pissed off that it's only got one CPU variation because with the previous MacBook Air it had an i5 and an i7 you can still pick that up if they still sell it and one thing that people were also complaining about I think it was one of the biggest issues with the previous MacBook Air since it was so outdated which was its screen so its screen was a TN panel and now they've upgraded it to a retina display a 2560 by 1600 retina display and they're also claiming that you can get up to 12 hours of battery life with this that's probably during regular use like probably watching videos writing down documents not anything intensive like using Final Cut Pro to edit 4k video not that I do that anyway and now it's also got two USB type C ports which are Thunderbolt 3 enabled and the good thing about this is that now you can connect an external GPU or connect it to multiple monitors so the nice thing about USB type C is that you can send video through it you can send data through it you can send audio through it you can send power through it so it's pretty good it's nice to see that the new MacBook has that but then the thing is that this MacBook is no longer that easy gateway into the Apple ecosystem so now this thing can go up to about I believe one thousand two hundred or three hundred dollars I'm not pretty sure but then for that amount of money at the at its base price one thousand one hundred dollars you could go pick yourself up a 13 inch macbook pro for an extra hundred dollars so this thing's price is not really justified this thing when you spec it out it can get more expensive than a macbook pro a 13 inch macbook pro and for what reason just pick up a macbook pro but then this thing is a thin and light ultrabook but it's pretty hard to recommend if it was like nine eight ten years ago when it first came out it would be pretty easy to recommend because then when it first came out it was this thin ultralight laptop that you could walk around with and do everything with it but then now eight years nine years ten years down the line the other devices such as the Dell XPS 13 or the Razer Blade Stealth or the Surface Laptop 2 or even the Surface Book 2 so it's very hard to recommend this product even at, at its price I'll just say spend the extra hundred dollars and get a 13 inch MacBook Pro but then if you don't need that extra power maybe get the MacBook Air but then it's no longer the cheapest way to get into the Apple ecosystem the only way that it, that I can recommend this to people is that if you need Mac OS that like like if you're tied into that Apple ecosystem but then at the current moment it's it's very it's got very good specs I cannot lie about that the Apple T2 chip uh, the very very fast SSDs, the the i5, which is kind of annoying because I don't understand why they didn't put an i7 variant. Maybe because it's so thin, it would throttle or something. Such as the MacBook Pros with the i9s when they were throttling. But enough about that. Like it's very hard to recommend this when there are other laptops out there on the Windows side that have got very good build quality, that are very light and portable, and are very powerful, and have got slightly more ports. Uh, I don't know why I mentioned that, 
but it's very hard to recommend it right now like the only way I can recommend this is previously stated if you need Mac OS like Mac OS is your favorite go-to operating system you only use Mac OS but then if you want to spend money on an on a thin and light ultra book the Dell XPS 13 the razor blade stealth the surface book laptop the surface book 2 which is supposed to be with the macbook pros but i'm just throwing it in there because then it's also a thin and light laptop i'm not saying why does it exist it's not a pointless product somebody out there is gonna go out and buy this and i don't recommend you go for a 1.5 terabyte hard drive on it that's not gonna work out but it's it's a compelling purchase, but then what I would like to say is a better purchase than this. If you don't mind going out and buying your own mouse and keyboard and a monitor, is the Mac Mini. That for me seems like the perfect device for a person who wants to easily get into the Apple ecosystem. So, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Please leave a like down below and subscribe. And thank you all for watching. Peace.